First of all, I want to say thanks for allowing me to come here. I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to talk to you about Canvas. This is something that's really transformed our school. Um, we're in Iowa. We're a very rural school. We have about 160 kids in our high school, about 600 kids in our entire school district, K-12. So we're pretty small. Um, this has really helped us, not only uh, educationally in our classrooms, but sharing some of the resources that we have to share um, due to our size, um, which I'll kind of get into here in a little bit. Um, just to kind of share with you our Canvas story, kind of why we chose Canvas. Uh, a year ago, I was a group, or with a group of teachers and administrators that went to um, the PLC conference Solution Tree uh, down in St. Louis. Uh, we came back, uh, talked basically the whole ride home from St. Louis, why do we want to change our classrooms and how do we do it? And uh, we had been in contact with Canvas uh, probably for about, I would say, three months prior to that conference. Um, we got back um, and I kind of took the lead on playing with the Canvas software, seeing how we could use it, changing some things um, for us that customized things for us in Iowa. Um, so that's kind of where we started. Um, we played with the sandbox model. Uh, I started this past fall, so in the fall of 2012. Um, and we started to really grow into it. Uh, there were about three of us that started using it. Um, by, I would say, the middle of September, I went to our superintendent. And I said, I really think we need to purchase this. Um, so that's what we did. I went to the school board. Uh, we talked about it, and we purchased Canvas, which um, I think our teachers would say has really improved instruction. Um, so we actually did this in the middle of the year. The biggest thing we found after the PLC conference and from all of the things uh, that we had talked about as a staff was this really comes down to learning. And we know today, 2013, that our learners are very, very different. Um, I graduated about 13, 14 years ago. Um, I can tell you the way I teach is very different than the way my high school teachers taught. Um, and I would say if you even go back further than that, there are things that are a lot different, um, not only with technology, but instruction and uh, all of the things that we do in a classroom today because our kids have cell phones, they have computers, they have video games. So we have to change the way that we teach. So we, the first thing we said was, how do we improve learning? And what should our schools look like? One of the things uh, our superintendent and all of our administrators have kind of come to realize, we have to tear down the walls of our schools. Uh, I teach in a district, our buildings are uh, 80 to 90 years old. Uh, they're very old, uh, they're not nice by any means, uh, but the thing is, I would say the stuff that's going on inside those rooms is better than probably a lot of schools around us that have much nicer schools. Uh, and the reason is because we have focused more on how can we change what those classes look like, how have we changed our instruction. So we have focused less on what does the building look like, we're focusing on how can we actually reach kids? Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the buzzwords that we've used in education and kind of uh, taken, uh, not only me, but other people on our staff have taken to heart and really ran with. In the state of Iowa, and I think this is kind of across the country now, but we have what are called 21st century skills. This kind of goes with that whole core curriculum part of Iowa uh, that we have really tried to emphasize here probably in the last five to six years. I kind of paraphrase these. Obviously, collaboration is a big part of education today. Our students want to work with others. Uh, regardless of what they might tell you, they want to work with other students. And that might not be sitting face to face with someone. It may be using technology. The second thing on there is working Flexi flexibly in ambiguity, okay? We talked a lot about LTIs here. We talked about APIs. We don't know what tomorrow is going to be. We don't know what tomorrow in education is going to be. 
So we have to know that there are going to be times where we don't know the answer to the problem. And for some of our teachers, that has been an issue. Well, we have to know the answer. Do you really? And that's the question we have asked our staff. The third thing, leadership skills and integrity. I think that has been kind of a standard that's been around forever. It really just hasn't been spoken a lot. Initiative and self-direction. Here's something that we've really struggled with. How do we get kids to do things? How do we get kids to take the initiative to start something? And I think Canvas has that ability to get that piece out there for kids to see and then take it the next step further, which I'll give you some demonstration or give you some examples that are going to, I think, help you as you kind of get started with your Canvas journey. If you're already into Canvas, hopefully this can help you even further what you're doing. Um, productivity and accountability basically comes down to doing your work, doing it on time. Creativity, digital tools, and critical thinking skills, all very important things, as you can see from everything you've been to at this conference thus far. Now, some of the buzzwords, and I'm going to kind of elaborate on these because I think they're really important and I think they are really changing the face of education and changing the way that we, as educators, are doing business. Flip classrooms. How many people have heard of flip classrooms or are doing them? Great. Project-based learning. How many people have heard that word? All right. And then differentiated learning. I'm assuming all of us have probably heard that buzzword um, because it's a big part of dealing with uh, some of our students and using the tools that we have to help them learn even more. Flip classrooms uh, really became a buzzword uh, in our school district about a year and a half ago. Uh, we had a couple of, of teachers, and, I, and I'm really proud of this. These are not people that are right out of college. These are 20, 30-year teaching veterans that have said, we need to change. And to do that, we're going to have to look at some other things. And we've had a couple people that have bought into the flip classroom, and I'll share kind of what they've done. Um, I've used it uh, in a couple of different situations myself, um, so I can say that I have done that as well. Project-based learning, you know, we've, we've talked about that. We've talked about that. Uh, in the state of Iowa, I'm a career and technical teacher. We have to do project-based learning. We don't have an option. We have to demonstrate it. Um, the state of Iowa comes in, and they say, you better be doing it. They evaluate that. We have to show and demonstrate every part of it. So um, for us, it's easier. I think uh, if I was a core teacher, this might be a little bit harder at times, but I think there's a lot of great examples out there as to how we can do that in a math or English or social studies classroom. And then differentiated learning, I think Canvas has really helped us um, with the differentiated part because of modules and uh, some of the assignments can be adjusted. So I'll talk more about all of these in general, but I think these three words really captivate the whole 21st century skills. Flip classrooms, again, it's about the learning. Canvas really helped us when we went to the Canvas platform in November because I, we had a teacher, she's a 20-year teaching veteran, she teaches the uh, entry-level math classes in the high school. Um, she really was looking for something where she could do her flip classroom and she could do it in one spot because the the obstacle we had run into was we could do flip classrooms but we had to go to YouTube. Then you had to go to another site to do um, some of the activities. Then you had to use some of the textbook stuff. So we were piecing together about three different parts. Well, when we got Canvas, everything really went together very seamlessly. So we used the modules, we used the quizzes, we used the discussions forms. And our students, uh, I won't say that we didn't have to do some training, but it was very minimal. Our students jumped in and they did it. And in fact, I would tell you a lot of our students have come back and said, you know what, this really helped us learn math. This really helped us learn the subject that we were covering. The other thing with the flipped classroom and I think where Canvas really helped us was with the teachers. The teachers, uh, 
I always heard this uh, analogy when I was in college, and, and then I saw it in, in action when I went out actually in the field. Who's doing the work in your room? I talked to uh, this teacher that went to the flipped classroom, and she said, I just went home every night, and I was exhausted, and I had a stack of papers this big, and I didn't know what to do. Well, now it takes some of the responsibility off the teacher and puts it on the student. Here's what you need to do. It's given to you. It's given to you in a clear format, and now you have to do it. So that the teacher becomes more of the facilitator. They're out in the audience helping students learn. And maybe Johnny is not at the same spot as Susie is. That's OK, because Johnny is in an accelerated program, and Susie needs a little more help. So that's where we have to use that technology, such as Canvas, to make that uh, transition for both of those students easier. The other thing, students had to take responsibility for their learning. We felt that was really important. And we spent a lot of time on that. Um, and our administrators supported our staff in doing that. And uh, I think our students have really bought into it. I'm not going to say that it's perfect. But for the most part, it has been pretty successful. Again, the Canvas tools that really, really set this off for the flipped classroom. Number one, discussion forms. Okay, collaboration. That's a big part of our kids' world today. Again, they may not like to do it face-to-face, -face, but they use Snapchat. They use text messaging. They use uh, you know, online tools, Google Hangouts, Google Chat. All right? Our students use those tools prior to using Canvas. Well, Canvas gave them the opportunity to actually collaborate together, or they could collaborate with the teacher, which is another big part of the flipped classroom. The other thing is with videos, okay, the, the teacher put out a video. I did this. I teach an accounting class. My students said the video really helped them learn some difficult topics. The reason was, which they can't do when I'm in the class, they can hit pause and they can go back in the video and they can say, or they can say, oh, Mr. McQuillan said I need to do this, this, and this. They couldn't do that before and it really changed how they were learning in, in class. The modules part um, in our math classes, they absolutely love this. They had to do step one, then they did step two, then they did step three. Maybe they took a quiz in there, then they did some other things. So it really made them sequentially go through things. But again, they didn't necessarily have to do it at the same speed. And you all have students that learn at different rates of speed. We know that. Outcomes. This is something um, we're still kind of working on uh, with the outcomes part. I think we're making some big progress. We are trying to get all of our classes aligned with the Iowa Core curriculum, which is basically our standards for the state. And we could essentially point to lesson one aligns with standard 3-A or whatever it may be. That's what we're trying to get to. Again, we're not quite there yet, but we are working on it. The other part of the outcomes, if you're doing an English project or something like that, you can set up rubrics, and the rubrics show what you are actually teaching. And then the quiz, quizzes part, um, the quizzes feature is much more advanced uh, than anything we had ever used. Um, you know, We weren't limited to true, false, or multiple choice. We could kind of open this up to some other things, such as short answer or even essay questions. Um, we really, really bought into that, and that really helped uh, get some of these flipped classrooms off the ground. Project-based learning, you know, as we have all heard over and over again, how we get kids engaged is by getting them involved. And how we get them involved today is not probably going to be the same as it was in the 1990s or the 1980s. So technology has become a big part of that. And yes, video, audio, even word processing or things of that nature, but Canvas has a big part in this because the hands-on learning part can be um, organized by Canvas. And 
Uh, this is useful stuff for kids because if you think about your job as a teacher or if you're a tech person, um, you have to organize what you're going to do. You don't do something backwards and expect it to work right. So Canvas really helped organize things, put it in a format that our students could understand. And I'll share an example here in a minute of uh, something that I did in my classroom. Uh, I teach a, a business class. And again, in the state of Iowa, we have to show that we do things um, uh, based on a project in our classes, every class that we teach. So one of the things that what my students have to do is they have to create a business, write a business plan. They have to demonstrate, you know, what's the building going to look like? How am I going to make this work? What's a budget look like? So project-based learning in Canvas um, really gives you a lot of features that you wouldn't have if you were just to hand out a sheet of paper and say, do these five things or ten things that it might be. The pages feature gives you an opportunity if you're having a project that's going to last the entire year or half a year, you can use that as kind of your wiki for your classroom. So you can add to it as you go. You don't have to give them all the information on day one. The announcements part, how do I get my students to know what's going on? Sometimes you have to tell them. And the announcements part is, again, that collaboration piece. You know, Friday, we're going to have a project check or something like that. Modules, if you're doing a project for English or a social studies project, and you know you're going to have about eight different parts to it, you can put that into the modules piece. You can make sure they do part one before they do part two. Assignments, again, you can use the rubrics part of this. Um, and it, it is very powerful. Students know they can look at the rubric online. They don't have to you know, use the excuse, I lost my piece of paper. And then again, the outcomes part goes with your standards. Differentiated learning, uh, how can we meet the needs of students? Uh, if there is a part of this educational system that I think has been emphasized, um, probably more so than anything else, I think it's differentiated learning. Again, as I stated earlier, we know our students are different. We know that we have students that learn at different rates of speed, so we have to differentiate things. We have to give them options, which is what Canvas is really all about, options. What can you do with Canvas that you couldn't do if you simply just gave people a piece of paper? So. Again, you have to ask yourself, do all of our learners need to do the same things? And most of the time, I think you can probably say, no. They don't have to do the exact same thing. So when it gets into the differentiated learning part, I think a lot of our staff found that they had to get away from traditional thinking of everybody's going to do the same thing at the same time, fifth period. They had to move toward a belief that we're going to do things a little bit differently for each group of students. And a prime example was in one of our science classrooms. We had a, uh, a teacher, again another veteran teacher, who changed his curriculum so he could meet the needs of his students. It was project-based learning. It was uh, some of the flipped classroom pieces that he put together to give students the opportunity to succeed. Again, I think the modules part is a huge piece in this. I think uh, you have to have um, opportunities for kids to do things, but maybe it's not going to look the same. The collaboration part, our digital tools, and we all have those. We all have digital tools that we have available for students. And again, you're piecing together, I think, the flipped classroom and project-based learning to make this work. Um, I spoke to a, a friend of mine in the last couple of days, 
you know, where are we going with technology? Where is this, what's it gonna do to education? And that's the question we have to all ask each other. How are we going to change? Because if we simply stay in the traditional mode, which is the easiest mode, but if we simply stay there, we are going to get left behind. And as we heard at the keynote this morning, you know, we are tending to run three to five years behind technology. So what can we do to keep up? And I really believe that's where Canvas plays a big role with our educational system because we have all of these tools available to us and we can integrate a lot of the things that we use on a regular basis right into the Canvas program. Um, differentiated learning, uh, again, goes back to our at-risk students. It goes to uh, some of our special education students. Um, but I think it really goes into our general education classroom. Because we have to allow our students that freedom to think big. What can we do? You know, and we're in Iowa. Uh, some of you are in major cities. We don't really have major cities close to us. So we have to use some of these pieces so our students understand this is what's going on in Salt Lake City. This is what's going on in Chicago. Because otherwise, they don't get it. We have cornfields. Um, that's about it. All right, so where do we go from here? I think our challenge is to look forward. What can we do as educators? to set the tone for the future and that not only get with the curve but get ahead of the curve and maybe set it. What can you do differently? You know, again, technology is changing at an exponential rate. How can we get there? How can we get ahead of it and use it to the benefit of our students? The third thing, I challenge you to put your classroom on the cutting edge using Canvas, using all the options that are available to you, uh, because I really believe it has the opportunity to really change not only what your students are learning, but how you are an effective educator. So again, I want to thank you. Uh, are there any questions that you might have for me? Yes? What's the demographic makeup of the students? Such as? Uh, Okay. What, what is the ethnic, or what is the demographics of our high school? We are, uh, we are about as vanilla as they come. Okay, we, we have no diversity. Um, I would say, you know, if you want to talk average income, somewhere in the range of probably 50,000, somewhere in there. Tradi kind of a prototypical farming community. We are a one-to-one -one computer school, so every student in our high school has a computer. Um, access, uh, very minimal. I would say less than 10% of our students don't have the internet, uh, and I would say most of them find access if they need it. Yes? What have been the stumbling blocks uh, with alignment? I would say it has probably been uh, more so how the state of Iowa has kind of put out the core curriculum for us um, because it's kind of in limbo. We don't know exactly what exactly they want right now, but we're getting closer. I think we're within six months of that being really finalized. Does that answer your question? It, it, we are putting in what we know is finalized, um, but we don't know 
some of the pieces are not finalized, so we don't want to do the work twice. So that's been the biggest issue. Yeah? Yes. Mm-hmm. And I agree totally with that concept as a math teacher, um, dumb teacher specifically. But my question would be, first of all, are the kids watching the videos at home, even if they have internet access and all this is crazy? I know take more tests will learn all the videos at home before they come back to class. Um, so I would feel probably that I would have to spend time on content again, or you know, and the difficulties of it. Um, are they understanding the concepts from bouncing? What has our experience been with flipped classrooms and watching the videos and uh, comprehending things? I, truthfully, I think uh, watching the videos has not been an issue. Um, I'm not going to say that it's 100% because that would be a lie, but I think you know the majority, the vast majority, watch them. And number two, comprehension, I'm not going to... Uh, kid you, uh, the flipped classroom, obviously the, watching the video, you hope that they get everything, but there's going to be questions, and that's kind of what um, you're trying to move toward a little bit, is getting them to ask the questions, you know, why do you not understand this, or what, what part don't you understand, maybe? Anything else? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What makes a teacher go about getting the videos into Canvas or making videos into Canvas? I actually made, uh, the question was, uh, how did I make my videos in Canvas? I made them directly in Canvas. Um, <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> I could afterwards if you want to stick around. Um, but uh, yeah, that's what I did. I've also done them in YouTube as well. How long can you make your videos and not use up your storage space that you have in there? I, we try to keep our videos, you know, in the, the rule of thumb is with the flip classroom videos, how long would you want to watch a video about math or accounting or whatever it is? We try to keep them under three minutes because otherwise it's like, her question, how many people are going to watch the whole thing? But if you keep them short and sweet, to the point, um, I think that kind of eliminates it. Uh, we, I have used YouTube, and I, I, you can integrate that right into uh, Canvas as well. Thank you. If you have any other questions, you feel free to email me or stop me afterwards.